Okay, so Boolean algebra is, as I said before, basically how we simplify um, Boolean equations, where Boolean equations use Boolean variables, Boolean everything. And these are variables that either have the value of true or false, or what we'll call zero or one, zero being false, one being true. Um, a lot of these come about sort of logically thinking through what we already know about gates. So for example, starting with very simple things, if we have an OR gate, um, you can imagine that if you add or OR zero with any input, the output will just be the same. Likewise, if we have an OR gate and one of the inputs is always one, um, the output will always be one regardless of what this A is. And in a similar way, we can build through some of the larger rules. So other rules involve the fact that if we have the same input um, to both legs of the gate, the output will just follow this input. Uh, again, logically makes sense when you follow it through. Um, complementary rules define what happens when the inputs are complementary of each other. So one input is the inverse of the other. And again, we can go through and build up some of the bigger rules of Boolean algebra. Um, I won't go through all of them because we've done that already. One of the important ones to remember is De Morgan's law um, or De Morgan's theorem. So this is how we convert uh, from using OR gates, NOR gates to NAND gates and vice versa. When you want to prove these rules, um, there's two basic ways to do it. The first is what we call perfect induction, which we can only do with Boolean. Uh, in perfect induction, we have an example written out, and we just go through every possibility for the inputs here. So in this example, we have possibility 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So that's the, the binary truth table. Um, and we can simply go through and write what the result will be for this side of the equation and compare it with the other side. Again, because this is all Boolean, we can try every single possible input. Um, so for example, here we know what the AND gate should look like. Um, and if we follow this through, as I did before, you'll see that this here results in the same um, answer as the AND gate. You can also, of course, derive the identities. Um, and here what we're doing is using some of the earlier laws to build up um, the later laws. So I don't think we need to go through that whole example again. Um, I'll go through a few different examples in these slides later. Uh, and where we really like to use it is to actually simplify circuits. So if we're given a circuit or we have a circuit we know that performs some function, we can reduce it to use less gate. So um, in this example, you can take the inputs A and B here. Um, we have an NAND gate, NOR gate, inverter, um, and an OR gate. So what we can do is actually go through and first um, draw what the equation would be and then simplify that equation. So we went through this example before. Um, maybe I'll just go through it again quickly. So say we had um, this example here and I believe this should actually be a yeah, error in the slides. Um, so we have that circuit in equation form there. Now if we want to go through, we can use those laws that I had um, up here. So one of the first ones we'll use is De Morgan, which states that we can replace a NAND function with an OR function with the inputs inverted. So this means we can write that. Um, and we'll do the same thing for this uh, NOR gate here. We'll also use De Morgan's. Um, so at this point it might look a little crazy because they're just flipping it so that the other one has a AND gate and the other one's using a uh, OR gate. 
But what we'll then do is use a number of the other rules to reduce this further. Um, so if we have A, we can replace just this B with 1 plus um, B, again, because we know, or 1 not plus, sorry, 1 and B. Um, we know 1 and B is the same thing as just B, so 1 and B complement is the same thing as B complement, and then we still have plus A and B complement. Um, at this point, B complement is common in both these terms. Uh, so what we can do is say what we're left with is 1 plus A and it with B complement. Um, 1 plus A is always equal to 1. So we just cross that out as it's equal to 1. Um, and then 1 and B complement is just equal to B complement. So this then equals A complement or with B complement. Um, and using De Morgan's, we know this is actually just a NAND gate. Uh, so using a few rules, just going through them step by step, you can see how you can reduce this whole circuit to a simple NAND gate with Boolean algebra. Um, so these are some additional examples I'll just go through to give you an idea. Uh, the next assignment, there'll be a number of problems similar to this on it. Um, so in this example, this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so this is a sort of another proof example, so very similar to the proof we did before. Um, and what we do is we'll just go through and use the distributive property. So we'll distribute A here and here. So we'll have A and A plus A and B. Um, so we're trying to prove this. So then A and A, we actually know is equal to A, um, and we'll use this to make it A plus A and 1. A and 1, or with A and B. Um, so at this point, why we've done this A and 1 is you can see we have this common term of A, here and here. So you can just remove that. Um, so then we have A and 1 or B. Um, so 1 or B is just equal to 1, we know. So this is equal to A and 1. Um, and A and 1 is just equal to A. So there you go. Uh, so that's an additional example. There's it written out again. Um, so another example we'll go through here is slightly more complicated. Um, and again, we just want to use various rules to reduce this. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is use De Morgan's theorem um, to break apart the OR gate. So when we when we look at this, what we will see is that there's sort of one literal here, one here, and this is all under um, one big NOR operation. So using 19, um, we'll actually split that, so using this rule here, into just two complemented versions. So what you'll end up with is um, a complement of A and B. Again, we're considering that whole A and B as just one, um, one variable, effectively.
we complement it, and then we still have at the end here this part. Um, so the next step is we'll apply De Morgan's again um, to break this apart here and in a similar way to break um, this term apart. So directly, you can see from 20, this just becomes A plus B. Um, and then we have an A. Yeah, sorry. Definitely. A bar plus, or A complement plus B complement. Um, and then this one, we'll sort of use the opposite. So we use 19 here. We have the form of A complement and with B complement. Um, and that becomes A plus B, or A or B all complement. And then we have an additional complement, which we'll cancel out. But if I write it first, A plus B. Um, and then there's this complement, so that those cancel out, and you're just left with A or B. Um, and again, we'll have brackets around it. Uh, and finally, we still have at the end plus A complement and B. Um, so at this point, we'll distribute those two terms. So in a similar way to multiplication, we'll have that and that and then times that. So we have A complement and A um, plus A complement, again here, and B plus B complement and A um, plus or, or B complement uh, and B. And then finally you have again this term here at the end. So you can see how the distributive works very similar to what you're already familiar with. Um, so finally, you can recognize the fact that A complement ended with A uh, is always zero. And again, B complement ended with B is always zero. Um, so now we'll apply another identity where we notice we have two terms, both with A complement and B in it. Um, and when you OR those two terms together, the result is just the same as the input. Um, we're effectively using number three here. Last uh, Yes. Oh, where did that drop? Yeah. No, I'm just looking. I think. Um, yeah, I think actually when I had this will change the result a little from what. It, um, if that originally hadn't been there, then you could combine the two. I actually the very initial one is a typo, but we'll go with it. Um, in this case, effectively, this will be, I believe, the most simple form. Um, we just follow that down. At that point, so... Yeah, so the the example that'll be online actually won't have that. So that'll be changed, but that's almost uh, another example then. Um, so a second variant of this is, in this case, I'll use the um, 
I'll use it in that form so the B is not complemented at the end. If you're given an equation, you may be asked to implement it only with one type of gate, so only NAND gates or only NOR gates. Um, and how we do this is I'll actually assume that we've gone through and simplified it in general here. Um, and what you'll end up with is this, uh, and again, it'll be, all the steps will be online. So at this point, what you need to do is convert it to only using NAND gates, and we'll use um, De Morgan's to do that. So we'll first redraw this with a complement over the whole thing, um, the reason being that we want it to be in this form here. Um, as we want to then convert it to using NAND gates. So I need a complement over it, but I'll add another one to uh, effectively get rid of that. So at this point, it's still the same as the line above it. But we can then use this uh, portion of it and apply De Morgan's directly and end up with Um, so this is using only NAND gate. So if you were to draw it in schematic form, uh, you could see, for example, that if we have input A, we'll first use one NAND gate um, to form A complement and B complement. And then we can form each of the literals in terms. So we have A complement NANDed, a NAND gate with B. So draw that in. And then B complement and a NAND gate with A. And finally, the output is just the NAND of those two literals. Yep, exactly. So if you were using, if you were asked to do it with only NOR gates, um, instead of this step here, um, as you say, you could instead, as you want it to go from, um, you effectively want to go from this form backwards, right? So as you say, you would double bar over here. Um, and then you could use the fact that you now have each literal uh, inverted and you would get A and B. Um, and then the whole thing Something like that. Sorry, it's a little messy, but uh, yes, because we're going from um, we're going from this form where it puts it in what side? Oh yeah, put it in nor. Sorry, I did the exact same thing. Yeah, so to put it in nor, then. Um, we'd be using this, one of those. Let me just clear all this. So to put it in NOR, um, again, if we start from that, um, you want to use, you need, yeah, you need to split each of the individual um, NAND gates apart using this, oops, using number 20. Um, let's 
So using 20, we want a invert over So again, we could invert each one. Um, and then using 20, you would end up with then each one complemented and the whole thing complemented. So that should be a plus. Um, and then obviously, some of those will reduce down. Does that make more sense? Um, so that would be if you were asked using NOR gates. And if you want, you can. Um, so there's where we'll use D Morgans is to go with NAND and NOR gates. And there's the full example again. That shouldn't be there. Um, so if you want to see more about this, um, basically chapter 9 of Bebop to the Boolean Boogie and all the notes have these simplifications on them. Um, and do you want to take a break or just keep going? The next part's pretty short, so just keep going.